Welcome back into Wake Up America. Happy Monday to you. I'm Rob Finnerty. More than two weeks since Hamas terrorists attacked Israel on October the 7th and fear of a larger conflict is continuing to grow, leaving the world on its heels as we inch closer to a possible third world war. We're hearing a lot of that, and we've heard a lot of that over the last several weeks. Joining us now from our former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, great to have you back on this morning. So we keep hearing that, that term thrown around pretty loosely, I think, World War III, World War III. Um, but first, I, I want to get your reaction to something that's developing right now. The Chinese Navy is moving ships into the Mediterranean Sea. We've got two carrier fleets there right now. Their ships in close proximity to our ships. Probably not a good thing. What do you make of it? No, it's definitely not a good thing. And, uh, you know, China has been trying to take a larger and larger role in the Middle East. China is an energy poor country. It needs uh, considerable amounts of oil and natural gas. And uh, uh, it's trying to expand its footprint and has been for some time. It, I think it's a good indicator for those who say, oh, we don't need to worry about Europe. We don't need to worry about the Middle East. We only need to worry about China and Asia. Wherever we're perceived as stepping back, China is going to step in. And this crisis is extremely important for the United States and its close allies like Israel and many of the Gulf Arab states. Uh, it doesn't need a Chinese presence to make it uh, more complicated and riskier than it already is. Yeah, we're 16 days since the October 7th attacks, uh, and we keep hearing about this imminent ground invasion of northern Gaza. It hasn't happened yet. I I'm wondering if you think uh, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is having second thoughts. Well, I think uh, both the United States and Israel are pursuing a potentially catastrophic uh, policy here. Uh, and I think it's one that's going to uh, definitely risk uh, increasing Israeli casualties when they finally do get in and really risks the lives of the hostages uh, who have not yet been freed. Uh, the, the idea, I think, is that the, in part because the Biden administration doesn't understand the nature of the conflict fundamentally. This is not really about Hamas versus Israel. This is about Iran versus Israel, using Hamas, using Palestinian Islamic Jihad, using the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, using Hezbollah uh, as surrogates. So this idea that we can negotiate with Hamas and they'll dribble out one or two hostages, uh, and, and the more we can put off Israel's attack, the greater the chance for peace, I think harms Israel, but even worse, harms the United States. Uh, Hamas has over 200 hostages, dribbling them out at the rate of one or two every couple of days could postpone this indefinitely. It would show Israel doesn't have any teeth. As I say, even worse, it would show the United States doesn't have any teeth. Yeah, and we still think uh, around 10 U.S. hostages, by the way. I, I don't know why no one is talking about that. It brought down Jimmy Carter in 1979. That lasted for 440 days, and that, that gave way to 12 years of Republicans in the White House. I'm glad you brought up Iran. Take a listen. This is Anthony Blinken yesterday on holding Iran accountable. In terms of the threat from Iran you just referenced there, President Biden in his Oval Office address said that the U.S. would hold Iran accountable. What does accountable mean? Well, what you've seen already, uh, Margaret, is very, a very clear message from the president, backed up by the deployment of um, two of our largest aircraft carrier battle groups, uh, to make sure that it's clear no one should take advantage of this moment. To, to escalate uh, to further attacks on Israel or, for that matter, attacks on us, on our personnel. Uh, and this is not by way of, uh, in terms of what we're doing by, by provocation, uh, it's designed to deter. Uh, Ambassador, is that enough, that language right there? Is that enough to deter Iran? Are they going to get the message or do we need to step it up a little bit when it comes to how we're talking about Iran's involvement here? Well, look, what you just heard from the Secretary of State was embarrassing to the United States. Uh, it's not that we lack the capabilities, and the two uh, carrier battle groups are evidence of that. It's that the Iranian mullahs believe we lack the willpower. And increasingly, as every day goes by, and for reasons that I cannot understand, the Israeli government doesn't go into the Gaza Strip, they think Israel lacks the willpower, too. It's the perception of weakness that drives Iranian strategy. And so far, they are advancing, and, and we are retweeting here. Uh, no, nobody wants conflict in the Middle East, uh, but Israel didn't start it. We didn't start it. Uh, Hamas started it, I think, at the instigation of Iran, because they saw they were in a dangerous position mm. of being isolated as it, Israel drew closer to the Gulf Arab states. Uh, and they thought this was the moment of American weakness to take advantage of it. And I have to say, so far, the Iranian strategy is prevailing over the 
absence of an American and unbelievably absence of an Israeli and Ambassador, strategy. just 15 seconds here, again to the World War III stuff. Uh, China sending naval destroyers into the Mediterranean. How concerned are you about a miscalculation, something going wrong that could bring us right up to the brink? Well, it's possible, but remember what Donald Rumsfeld always used to say, it's not American strength that's provocative. It's American weakness that's provocative, and we're looking pretty weak now. Great point. Uh, John Bolton, appreciate you being with us. Thank you.